meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? Um, there are 13 present. Alderman uh, Boren, Jose Heideman, and Carlson are excused. And next we'd like to ask you to read the quote for the day. Oh, thank you. Um, happiness is not the absence of problems, it's the ability to deal with them. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to resignations. City Attorney. There is one resignation uh, from Pamela Butler uh, Channel, uh, resigning from the uh, bid board, and she provides a letter explaining her reasons and uh, thanking uh, people for the opportunity that, uh, to be on the board. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Uh, move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to mayor's appointments. City attorney. There are three. Uh, the first uh, from the mayor uh, to the honorable members of the common council. Uh, hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. Roman Drawn to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee and the sustainable Sheboygan task force to fill the unexpired positions formerly held by Eldon Berg whose terms expire on 4-18-16. Another one from the mayor, uh, honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Jennifer Conrardi to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Heather Cleveland, whose term expires on 4 16 and a third one from the mayor, uh, honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Rick Scroggins, business owner, to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Pamela Butler Channel, whose term expires 12-31-16. Thank you. Those appointments will lie over. Um, next, I'd like to call on Chad Pelichek, our development director, for a presentation on the National Marine Sanctuary application. Chad? Got this new handy-dandy mic. Is it working? It is. Look at this, and it's wireless. So like, we can walk around the room now. <laughs> so what we wanted to do is give you a little update on where we are today with the National Marine Sanctuary Project. Some of you have heard about this. Some of you newer... Uh, folks on the council may have not, so we're just going to run through a little bit, and then at the end I have a little video to show. So next slide. So what is a National Marine Sanctuary? And I'm not going to read this to you, but this has been in the news for a while about uh, really designating shipwrecks in Lake Michigan um, as part of a sanctuary through the program of NOAA, which is a National Oceanic Administ Atmosphere Administration. It's a federal agency. Um, that has these sanctuaries all over, and it's really a historic district in the water where it preserves something. In this case, in this region, it'll be shipwrecks, um, and I'll show a little bit more about that, but this is their official designation, uh, their official uh, definition up there, and, and you can see what it is, so it's pretty detailed, but it's really all over the U.S. and Canada and on, uh, Hawaii. It's really... Uh, protecting different things. Some areas it protects, uh, protects coral reefs. Um, other areas it's wildlife. In this particular area, would, it'll be shipwrecks. Next slide. So here's a map of the National Marine Sanctuaries that are out there. There's 14 of them. What I want to do is highlight the one on the top right corner. Thunder Bay, Michigan is in Alpena, uh, which is about 150 miles north of Detroit. On Lake Huron, it is the only National Marine Sanctuary in the Great Lakes system. Um, so should we be fortunate enough to make it through the process, we would be the second one for the Great Lakes. Otherwise, you can see the majority of them are on the oceans. Next slide. So why a sanctuary here? The map on the right 
Uh, I know it's hard to read, but those are all shipwrecks that have either been identified or suspected in this region. So back in about the early to late 90s, the Historical Society finished a study Wisconsin Historical Society finished a study of the entire coastline and documented all of the known and suspected shipwrecks. And they came up with this, what they're calling Mid-Lake region, uh, from Two Rivers to Port Washington. So Two Rivers, Manitowoc, Sheboygan, and Port Washington. In that area, there was uh, 14 intact shipwrecks. You can see 137 vehicle losses. Uh, 34 of the wrecks are known and 12 uh, sites, and now there's actually a few more that are suspected. Um, next slide. So in this region, 15 of those shipwrecks are on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, there are some of the oldest wrecks in this area, uh, dating back to 1813. Um, there's a variety of vessels. There's some barges and some um, actual schooners that have sailed this area. Uh, and then the area has the most intact shipwrecks. So what you can see is these two pictures on the bottom. Um, the one on the right is off northeast off of Sheboygan. It's the galley nipper between here and Cleveland. And that's, has it, that's what it looks like today. It's, it's almost uh, like it had just been sailing and dropped to the bottom. The mast and everything is up in the air. That sank in 1833. The one on the right is the heady tedder. Uh, this is out southeast of Sheboygan, and it's sitting in about 110 feet of water, and you can see um, what its condition is. So they're pretty much intact, and Door County kind of prides themselves as the shipwreck capital of the world. If you were to be a diver in Door County, you wouldn't see what you see here. You would see parts and pieces of a, a boat. Here you see the entire shipwreck. Next slide. So the NOAA had a process where prior to this, they would... Um, designate uh, areas to become National Marine Sanctuaries, and under that process, it was either an act of Congress or the president declaring an area a uh, national sanctuary. So what they've done is they changed their uh, process and made it to a community nomination process um, and, are, and are allowing areas that feel they have enough significance in, to apply and self-nominate themselves. So... You can see here that the first step is community builds a nomination. Um, you can see the partners there, three counties, uh, four cities, uh, and a couple state agencies that helped with it. Uh, they submit the application to NOAA, and Governor Walker submitted it on behalf of the state in October of 2014. Um, NOAA does an initial review. Uh, they take a closer look and make sure it meets all their minimum requirements. And then the nomination is accepted and the nomination is added to what they're calling an inventory listing. Um, and then the last step is the future designation, uh, sanctuary designation. That's the step where we are today. We've made it through all of the entire review process, um, and now we're just waiting for, uh, Congre for the president to sign off on a uh, publishing in the Federal Register. Next slide. So where are we today? NOAA has decided to pursue uh, either Wisconsin or Maryland. They've received, I think, uh, four or five applications from around the country, um, Wisconsin being one of them. Uh, they haven't decided yet if they're going to proceed with uh, Wisconsin or Maryland. We're hoping that at the later part of fall they'll make that designation. Um, our contacts at NOAA out of the Ann Arbor office have been very optimistic. Uh, that they feel Wisconsin had a very good application. There was about 200 support letters from all different kinds of agencies that signed off on it. Recently, the mayor had worked with the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Initiative, which is made up of 100 and some uh, mayors in the United States and Canada. Uh, they supported it. So it's got huge support, um, and I think that's good for us. Um, they've really liked the process and the application that came in, so uh, we're hoping that we're chosen over Maryland to proceed. Once that's done, uh, NOAA publishes an intent in the Federal Register, and then they start an environmental impact statement, which could take up to a year uh, to do it to make sure that there's no significant environmental impacts as part of that. So as we roll this out, we're looking at where do we see ourselves going. I think this is another asset. Should we, even, should we not become a sanctuary? 
Um, there's, this is another marketing asset for us that, uh, from our tourism promotion and development side of things. So we've really looked at ourselves and said, where do we see ourselves? And we've got some great companies here uh, that have done a lot of robotics and different kinds of higher technology in their manufacturing processes. We've got some technology stuff. We've got spaceport, rockets for schools, all of that stuff. So we're, one, we're working on a concept called Fresh Coast Sheboygan that would look at marketing all of those kind of new, fresh technological ideas uh, in this community. And, and this could, in the future, be a potential marketing campaign on the tourism side um, once the How Do You Sheboygan is, is done. So this we're kind of looking at leveraging this as we move forward. This is real in its infant stages. Um, but to try to give a better understanding of this, we put together a short little uh, video with tourism and a guy from um, Milwaukee. So I'll turn it over if you can look at the screen. We should be ready to roll. Known as the spirit on the lake, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, graces the coastline of the planet's largest surface freshwater system. The community's coastal lifestyle embraces waterfront exploration and adventure, making Sheboygan a much desired balanced life destination to live, work, learn, and play. Presently, there are 14 national marine sanctuaries dating from 1975. Located in the center of a proposed freshwater national marine sanctuary, Sheboygan's freshwater coast is positioned to become an epicenter of discovery and innovation. Our community has always been bonded with the Great Lakes with a rich heritage of maritime activity and natural resource recreation. We are poised to move forward in response to the increasing global concern with freshwater resource management and conservation. Sheboygan South Pier has become a premier Midwest destination for innovative startups. The Future Science and Technology Exploratorium will feature interactive exhibits demonstrating what is and what could be. Our multinational companies have made notable advances in robotics, production, and research and development. Immersed in this culture of science, technology, and creation, next generation inventors can thrive. Space travel evolved from nautical science. Spaceport Sheboygan, with the embedded NASA Space Lab, affords travelers a space-inspired journey. A new Science on the Sphere exhibit promotes consciousness of nature's systems, while the annual Rockets for Schools is the largest rocket launching program for students in the Midwest. We are a community where children can have the ultimate freshwater sailing experience. The Sailing Education Association of Sheboygan exists to make this experience possible for present and future generations. Our thriving scuba community probes the depths for numerous shipwrecks suspended in clear, fresh water, bringing the past alive through journeys of exploration. Our community offers truly endless possibilities for residents and visitors to engage in freshwater experiences from science and technology to education, recreation, and exploration. The Sheboygan Fresh Coast is our community, and now is the time to establish its direction for future generations. Thank you. So if that's pretty much where we are today, uh, we're working on some leveraging and some long-range planning for this science and technology piece. Um, and you'll hear more to come as we kind of lay out a plan and figure out where we're going to be for the future. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Otherwise, thank you. Chad, thank you so much for sharing the story about these projects you're working on. Next, we'll move on to public forum. Uh, none this evening. Okay. Next is Mayor's announcements. We have a couple of uh, presentations this evening. Uh, the first one, I'd like to uh, ask Jerry Wenninger, the commander of the VFW Post 1230, and uh, Faye Sippel, the president of the Auxiliary, to step up and join me. 
This is a proclamation from the mayor's office, whereas since its founding, the United States has fought numerous wars and military actions, and tens and thousands of Americans, including a great many from Wisconsin, were captured and or were missing in action. And whereas many American prisoners of war were subjected to brutal and, and inhumane treatment by their enemy captors in violation of international codes and customs for the treatment of prisoners of war. And many such prisoners of war died while in captivity. And whereas the people of the city of Sheboygan recognize the sacrifices of all American prisoners of war and those who are still missing in action and their families are deserving of a special tribute. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, hereby proclaim the week of September 13th through the 19th of 2015 POW MIA Recognition Week in the City of Sheboygan and call upon citizens of our city to join with me in observing this week with appropriate remembrance and activities. Signed on the 8th day of September, Mike Vandersteen. The next uh, proclamation is uh, in conjunction with action by the uh, Public Works Committee and naming a new person to the Sheboygan Music Wall of Fame, which is located on the Fountain Park Bandshell. There hasn't been a nomination to that, uh, that Hall of Fame or Wall of Fame since 2007. So uh, I issue this proclamation, whereas since uh, the 1950s, Daryl Mann has been an inspiration and supporter of Sheboygan County musicians. And whereas as a drummer, band leader, entertainment visionary, booking agent, concert promoter, music store owner, production and lighting company owner, and designer, graphic brand designer, Daryl has played it all, booked it all, and supplied the venues for performances with equipment to make it happen. And whereas performing throughout the United States and booking Sheboygan musical groups throughout the country, Daryl helped to build respect for the Sheboygan area musicians that made them able to perform everywhere. And whereas Daryl's unique concepts led to major lighting and sound designs being built in clubs around the country, designing disco dance clubs and traditional nightclub designs, as well as building the entire interactive experience, his artistic designs have been admired worldwide. Whereas during his career in entertainment, Daryl Mann also played a very prominent role in the development of the Sheboygan Riverfront. He opened the first two businesses on the riverfront, the Harbor Inn and Classics Bar. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby recognize and congratulate Daryl Mann and present this proclamation to commemorate his selection to the Sheboygan Music Hall of Fame and extend to him our, de our deepest appreciation of all of his talented and dedicated work and wish him the best in all of his future endeavors. Daryl. Now this uh, award will re be represented to Daryl on Thursday night during the Taste of Sheboygan and will also uh, that evening unveil the new name on the Wall of Fame. You have to excuse my suit and tie. I didn't know this was going to be a big deal like this. Um, uh, those are very kind words. Uh, try to live up to it. Um, I just want to thank you, everybody. And uh, as you can tell, I'm not a very good public speaker because I forgot my teleprompter at home. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, when my son walked in, I thought, ah, oh, he's going to send me to a home. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to exit stage left. <laughs>
Okay, next we'll move on to the consent agenda. I'll include items 2.3 through 2.24. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, put all resolutions, ordinances, and substitute ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, next uh, section is communications. Um, items 3.1 and 3.2 will be referred to uh, various committees and the reports of officers. Item 4.1 is an RO by the City Planning Commission who has referred RO number 106 of 1415 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Mao and Associates requesting a vacation of a 15-foot water main easement on a piece of property on the Bowman, on Bowman Drive and recommends approval uh, of the RO. Um, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Move to file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 5.1 and 5.2 will also be referred to various committees. Item 5.3 will lie over. Items 4.5 through 5.7 um, will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to who is referred pursuant to RO number 79 of 1415 by the city clerk. License applications for the period ending December 31st of 2015 and June 30th of 2017 and recommends that the beverage operator license number 7782 be denied based on his record of violations related to the licensed activity. His record is a repeat law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Ben Heyman here this evening? He is not. We had invited him two times and he had, did not show either time. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Items six point through uh, six point two through six point six will be referred. Uh, Alderman Bellinger. Oh, I didn't hear. Oh. <laughs> Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that I um, I'm looking at September twenty eighth for a committee of the whole meeting, so we can take up the the proposed wheel tax and I think most likely the budget. Um, so the 28th, it'll be after finance and salaries and grievances. Thank you. Thank you. And then we'll move on to ordinances. 7-1 um, through 7-9, again, will be referred to various committees. Under section eight, matters laid over. 8.1 is an RO number 104 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting and amending the Petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval pursuant to section 66.0217 parentheses two of the Wisconsin statutes uh, for Wagner excavating. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to 8.2, which is an RO number 101 of 1415 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance Number 11 of 1516, RO 
number 76 of 1516 and RO number 92 of 1516 being a petition for direct annexation of the Wagner Excavating Properties, LLC. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass a substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item eight point three is uh, ordinance number resolution number sixty four of fifteen sixteen by Alderman Donahue, Boren, Hammond, Koth, and Heideman, adopting certain changes to the city's medical benefits plan and dental benefit plan effective for calendar year twenty sixteen coverage, and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January twenty sixteen coverage and thereafter. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other items, other matters rather, received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. 9.1 uh, is a report of officer by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30th, 2017. That will be referred to the Lawn Licensing Committee. 9.2 is a report of officer from the city clerk submitting a communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections on behalf of state inmate Brian K. Johnston, requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to be placed at either 930A Michigan Avenue or 1123-1125 North 14th Street, depending on availability. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 9.3 is an RO from the city <coughs> clerk submitting a communication from Alex Kaufman requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1734 North 11th Street. That also be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Uh, next we'll move on to Section 10, calling for a possible closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19851E, Wisconsin Statutes, for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property <coughs> where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the former Shukert property and the former Boston Store property. Second. Thank you for that motion. Will the clerk please call the roll for a closed session? <coughs> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. I just want to alert the viewing public that we uh, may go back into open session after the closed session. We'll see how things go. Uh, we'll take a short recess and reconvene in about five minutes. Thank you.